I'm Rob from Smart Boat Innovations. Thank you for joining me on this journey to transform your boat into a smart boat. Whether your boat is old or new, my goal with this channel is to assist you into turning into an incredible smart vessel. The best part is you don't need to be a tech whiz to achieve this. I've designed the content specifically for those with no technical background so everyone can benefit from it. In today's video, we will install a bilge high water sensor. I've chosen the Kara water sensor based on its price and large community following. The Kara sensor is a Zigbee battery operated device, but you can choose any other brand of water leak sensor as long as it carries the Zigbee logo. If you don't have a Zigbee network set up, then please watch this video that I made that shows how to create a Zigbee network on the Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant. You might ask, why do I need this sensor on my boat? I will see the water. The problem is, once you see the water, it will be above the floorboards. At this level, it will be really difficult to find the source of the leak. Now, if you have, say, four of these sensors in different key parts of the bilge, you will know immediately which part of the boat has a leak, and will be a much better place to stop the ingress of water. If you are not on board, you will receive a message on your phone informing of the leak, so you can quickly return to your boat. By the end of the video, we will cover the following steps. Unbox and explore the Kara water leak sensor. Add the sensor to Home Assistant. Test the sensor with water. And finally, set up a Home Assistant automation to notify us if there is a water leak. So let's get started. Here we have the Kara water leak sensor. They cost about 15 to 20 US dollars each. I usually buy a couple to reduce the costs. Now I like these sensors, they're really small, robust looking, look like they're well built and they, they fit in the palm of your hand. On the back is where the replacement battery goes when you need to replace it. You just take the lid off with a coin. The batteries are supposed to last two years. It takes a CR232 battery. The whole unit is rated waterproof IP67, so there's an O-ring around the battery lid. These two screws on the bottom are the actual probes for the water sensor. So when water touches both of these screws, uh, electricity is conducted through the water and it sets off the sensor. You can actually have an alternative way of mounting this. You can mount the, the sensor higher up and take the screws out and put in wires and then run the wires down to where the, the water is, is expected to be. The screws come out with a, a two millimeter hex tool. Then with the screws out, you just put a wire underneath. You probably have a lug at the end of the wire and then put the screws back in. Now the unit slides around quite easily. I usually use a bit of Velcro, sticky back Velcro, to fix it in place. Now the sensor actually has a button underneath the water drop. And you need to press this button to, to set it into pairing mode. And you need to press the button for at least 5 to 10 seconds. There's a little blue light where my finger's pointing, which will flash rapidly blue when it enters pairing mode. And when it flashes rapidly, you take your finger off, and then you can pair it with the uh, Home Assistant. Here we are with Home Assistant on my laptop. Now on the left, we need to scroll down to Settings. And on Devices and Services, we need to click on that. And then here's our Zigbee dongle. It changes for every release of Home Assistant, but we need to click on and find a Configure link. There we just click on Configure. And then the bottom right and corner is the Add Device. So on our water sensor, we need to press the, the button at least five seconds until it flashes quickly blue. And that's put into pairing mode and here we go, we found it really fast. Now we change the device name because the default one doesn't mean much to us. So let's give it a meaningful name. In the area, I like to create a new area for this in the bilge because we're going to have more than one water sensor. I have four on my boat. You can also have a look at the battery uh, levels and the temperature of the sensor. The battery level is quite useful because we will set up an automation which sends us a, a notification when the battery is very low. 
So let's go back and see the devices. So you can see the main build device has been created. Now what we need to do is we want to add this to a dashboard. Uh, let's add a dashboard. Uh, let's call it a dashboard sensors. I like to group all my sensors under one dashboard called sensors, but you can do this how, however you like. Let's get an icon that looks looks good. Now there's a number of ways to add the sensor to the dashboard, but like I like to go back to where we just came from. Go to the configure. Need to go to configure and then find the device. Click on the device, the main build, and under sensors you'll have a link to say add to dashboard. Click on that. You just have to select which dashboard you want. Select the sensors dashboard and next. And we can just use the default card. Let's go have a look at the dashboard on the left here, sensors, and you'll see the main build. It says moisture is dry, which is good, it means we're not sinking. So let's go test this sensor out, see if it actually works. So we're going to pop it in some water and let's see what happens. And the status changes to wet. Great. Now, just having a status on a dashboard is good, but it's not really helpful unless you can look at the dashboard all day. So we want to be alerted by our phone or sirens. So to do that, we need to go to settings and to automations. And we're going to, down the bottom right, we're going to create an automation and click on create new automation. Uh, so the trigger for this automation is going to be the state, the state of the sensor when it changes. So the entity is the, the main build. Now pick the one that's moisture, not the battery or the temperature one. Now we want to, to check when the state becomes wet. It doesn't matter what it was before, but when it becomes wet, we want this, this automation to get triggered. Now, the action will be a call of service, and we're going to put a few actions on here. The first one is going to be a notify. It's going to notify me on my phone, and on my phone I have the Home Assistant Companion app installed, so I'll get a notification by that. Let's give it a message, a meaningful message, water leak in main bilge. Let's copy that for the, the other actions. Let's add another action. Again, we're going to call a service, again, notify. In this case, it's going to be notified with WhatsApp. Um, so it's going to send us a WhatsApp message. We'll put the same message in there. And our third action, if we're on board, receiving messages on our phone is useful, but it's much better to have a, a loud noise. So we'll make sure we turn the siren on. And then we save the automation. Give it a name that's meaningful, water leak check, and then click on save. So we've set up an automation now that when this sensor becomes wet, it'll send us a message via our phone, via the companion app notification, also a WhatsApp, and also uh, ring the siren aboard. Now we can add other triggers here, and we will. If you have, you'll usually have more than one water sensor, so you, for each water sensor you just add another trigger. For example, the forward build or the aft build or whatever places you want to put these water sensors. Sending WhatsApp messages and calling a siren, we haven't done that yet in the, the tutorials, but we'll cover that in a future video. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.